a, a lot of people think that you just kind of walked away because of that photo, but I, I mean, I've known you for a long time, and I know it's got to be more than a photo that's that's going to make you walk away. So can can you just kind of like just touch on exactly what it was that led to that point? You know what it is, man. It was just a, a, a lot of things. The whole the way the way the whole operation was being run, I was uh, you know I was I was kind of unhappy with a lot of things. But I just I kept my mouth shut, trying to like deal with it, you know, and trying to remind myself, you know, I'm not spoiled. I'm okay, you know. I'm telling you, I'm not spoiled. I'm okay. So I was talking to the gig. When they called me, um, you know, we uh, we came to terms for a price on uh, what it would take to get me there, and I, I took their first offer. I didn't negotiate. I didn't ask for any special treatment or any special uh, kind of house or any special kind of hotel or whatnot. In my good faith, you know, I figured, you know what, it would be cool to be involved with this with this whole fight. It would be cool to be involved with uh, the promotion and whatnot. And, you know, and it would be cool to just be involved in a helping manner, you know, um, uh, just like uh, even to test myself to see if, uh, you know, how much help I can give to, to this team, you know. Uh, the fact that they reached out to me, they reached out through uh, uh, Jerry Byrne, who's a friend of, uh, of a friend of mine named Dean Byrne. I mean, he's a brother. He's a brother of Dean Byrne, who's a friend of mine. You know, he's a fighter in the UK. So I thought because of that mutual connection, you know, there, there was something there. I mean, little did I know that Jerry would be a scumbag himself, you know, but, right. but that would be for another but that's for later on, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Dean is my buddy, but his brother, you know, I, I don't know him a hole in the wall, but I went just on the basis that, you know, that's that's my, my, my friend's brother, and, um, you know, he's the one contacting me, mm -hmm. and uh, we can go from there, you know. So, in order to, for me to, you know, make them feel like, you know, I'm going to be on your side, I'm going to be a, a team player and whatnot, I didn't ask for more money, I didn't ask for any special treatment. I just kind of took the first offer, and I felt like that would at least show them, like, hey, man, you know, I'll be an open book with you, you know, uh, that was, uh, that's me kind of being, uh, kind of showing you my, my, my friendly, uh, friendly gesture towards you, you know, oh. um, I'll take the first offer, you know, I said, I said no, it's fine, it's fine, I said, uh, that's at work, so we'll get it done, you know, mm -hmm. so, they called me the week before Broner Garcia fight, and it was just a few days left in the week, so they said, we'd like to get you in. It was after, right after the press tour. So they said, we'd like to get you in on coming to Vegas. We'd like to get you in this week. Mm -hmm. I said, honestly, you're probably better off at this point waiting for me to finish Barna Garcia. And then I'll come the week after. Mm -hmm. Because I'll, if, if not, I'll have to come for a few days and then I'll have to leave and come back. You know. So they got back to me and they said, no, no, you know what? We want you in. Come in and then you can go back for Barna Garcia. I said, okay, you know, I even worked out that I could save them some money. I worked it out with Showtime. The Showtime would fly me back to New York, and then Showtime would fly me back to Vegas. Mm -hmm. So all Connor's team had to do was pay for me to get to Vegas the first time, you know? Mm -hmm. And then Showtime, Showtime would fly me back to New York on the Monday. I came in on a Wednesday two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I would come in on a, uh, I would leave on Monday, and I would return to Vegas the following Monday, you know? And that would be paid by Showtime. Leaving mon the Monday and Monday flights, the two Monday flights would be paid by Showtime. Mm -hmm. Connor's team only had to pay for me to get to Vegas the first time. Mm -hmm. So I saved them some money that way as well. Still, I didn't ask for any extra money. I didn't ask for any special treatment or anything else. Um, I get to Vegas. Uh, I get picked up by his team. And uh, they take me to the house. They take me to where the house of the sparring partners are at. And it's, it's the house of the sparring partners. It's his cut man. And it's, uh, his masseur, it's like a Russian guy. I don't even think he speaks much English, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest of the team was in another house. And then Connor was in his own house, which is, you know, it's cool, it's fine. Right. Now, I didn't know where we were, house we were staying at or whatnot. I pull up to this house, they pull, they pull up to this house, and I'm telling you, bro, it's like in the middle of a crackdown neighborhood. I mean, it's like in the middle of like nowhere. I mean, it's like on the outskirts of Vegas. Like the house, the area looks dilapidated. The house is dilapidated. I mean, I was like, what did they just revamp a little crack house and just put people in there? I mean, what is this place? You know what I'm saying? But again, I keep my mouth shut. And I just go ahead and do things that I said, hey, you know what, I gotta be a team player. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna be fine. And I, again, this is not what pissed me off. Whatever, it was fine. Mm -hmm. I go into the house, I say, oh, your bedroom's gonna be upstairs. So I took my bedroom went upstairs. And I, and, I, and I proceed to just go into my bedroom and close the door. There is no cable TV in this house. There are no TVs in any of the bedrooms. There's one master, ch master TV in the living room. It doesn't have any cable or anything, you know? So. <laughs> Okay, so whatever. I, 
was just saying to myself, you know, it's camp, I'll just stay to myself and I'll chill out, you know, I, I have a couple of things I brought with me anyway, you know, a little laptop, a little, you know, my cell phone, whatever, it's fine. I, I, again, I don't need anything special, I'm here to do a job, and I didn't mind. Well, Polly, not to, not to not to cut you off or anything, but just just to put it like in perspective, because I I know you've been I know you've worked with other camps before and whatnot. So uh, you, when you talk about the house being, I mean, I know most people are going to be like, ah, whatever. He's you know he's used to luxury and this that and the other. But yeah, but when, yeah. When when you say it's a crack house though, like can you just kind of put it in perspective you're, you're to like talking, other you're camps? Talking about, like, you're talking about like busted up walls, like you know, like I mean, it wasn't like that you can live in it, you would live in it, but like, you know, it's like, doors are like falling apart, like, really cracked, the paint's cracked, mm. like, you know, like, it's, it's not in very good condition, you yeah. know what I'm saying, it's, the, 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 the pavement on the ground was like, the wood, it was a wooden floor, it had like, it was like busted up, scratched, you know, like, mm. like, it was, again, it's not something that I, 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 I'm gonna say I don't do, I'm not gonna do, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I come from a lot worse yeah. at a certain point in my life, so, I, I just told myself, don't worry, man, it's gonna be nothing, this is not, this is not what, what made me leave, this is just part of the whole story that I'm gonna get into, you right. know, so, you know, some of the doors didn't open and close very well, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was like a little stupid shit, but also the area itself was ghetto outside, it was uh, the, the lapidated house, even if you look at it from the outside, it was, mm -hmm. you know, it was just the area itself was just not very friendly, not very kind, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, the crime happened in that area. People may have yet told me. You know, it was like a, it's like a little bit of a crime ridden area. You know, it's just not, it was wasn't cool, but it wasn't like I was gonna like leave because of that. I, 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 it wasn't anywhere near that. You know, but you could, so but you could tell. Room, but you could tell, like, just when you got in the area, you could tell, like, whoa, like this is. Listen, I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I've never, I never put, I would never even think of putting my spawn partners in a place like that. Wow. Straight up, like I, I have never been fought for hundred million dollars. I've fought in several different million dollar fights, but never in a hundred million dollar fight. So, yeah. and most people will never find a hundred million dollar fight. Still, having said that, I would never even think to put a team of mine in that place. Yeah. But I'll put it to you, I'll, I'll be straight up with you. You can ask anybody that's ever had, been in, I've ever had in camp with me, I've always given them good living conditions and, 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 and solid situations. Yeah. And nobody I've ever had in camp with me can complain about that, you yeah. know? So, 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 um, they told me I'm sparring eight rounds the next day. Mm. So, you know, I, mean, I wasn't in great shape. I, uh, you know, I had just started doing a little bit of running because, you know, everything came up on me last minute. And I was like, wow, it was like eight rounds, you know, right the day after I'm flying close country. I'm not in great shape, but I was like, oh, you know what? I got to deal with it, you know, eight, seven terms. I said, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the eight rounds tomorrow, you know? Mm. And we get, um, the next day, we get to the gym. The next day, we, we wake up, and they tell me, listen, Sparring is always at nine. The, the, the team tells me the farm founders in the house. They said, "But be on, be alert because sometimes they call us last minute." Connor may spar at 12 p.m. Connor may spar at 3 p.m. Connor may spar at 5 p.m. Connor may spar at 9 p.m., which is a regular schedule. Mm -hmm. So on sparring days, we always have to be like ready at any time. Mm -hmm. I said, "Wait a minute, wait." I was like, "What, what is this shit, bro?" I was like, "And in my training camps, I always had a schedule for mm -hmm. everybody that knows for the week." Mm -hmm. So again, I'm like, "Wait a minute, so what are you saying?" They're like, "Well, sparring days you have to be on call." Wait, what are you saying on call? So if I want to go to the mall and buy a pair of sneakers. On a, on a sparring day, I can't leave the house because, God forbid, they call us on sparring, like, and I, and I, and I was noticed, I gotta, I gotta be heading to the gym and I can't be away. They're like, yeah, essentially. I guess, I was like, all right, that's kind of bullshit. But whatever, I, but again, that's a bit of an ego maniacalness of, of him and his team, but again, it's fine. I, I'll, I'll deal with that, too. Mm -hmm. You know? But, but it was starting to, it was starting to hurt me. Like, you know, just a little bit, I gotta admit, that wouldn't kind of hurt me. Because you're using, you basically, the, the, uh, the power you hold over everybody to your, to, to your, advantage, using it just to just to keep people down, you know, just mm -hmm. to treat people a certain way just because you can, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And not because, and, and, and instead of treating people as, uh, in a good way because you can also do that, you know? So I just felt like, all right, it's a little bit I'm getting on my nerves, but it's fine, it's, it's not going to be another world. So I, um, I get to the gym the first night, it's fine, we did eight rounds, you know? Mm -hmm. And in reality, I got to tell you about those eight rounds, he wasn't very sharp, he wasn't very good, um, but he was well-conditioned. And I wasn't, mm -hmm. so I would say he probably got the better of the action, not so much for being better, but because he was able to be more busy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was able to, he was able to, you know, just keep a little busy in terms of his, move, his movement, in terms of throwing shots. You know, I, I couldn't match that intensity yet because my 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 condition wasn't there yet. But I was able to do eight rounds. I know the rounds. I still know how to push them in certain places. I still know how to, you know, make things happen to where I'm going to make you work, even if I can't work at that pace. And 
and you know maybe at least make it worth it for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be a team player and also know how to make I know how to make you uncomfortable without even throwing punches if you don't have experience. So I'm, I, I felt like I did some of that as well, but it, I thought it, I thought it worked out well because I thought I had made him work. You know what I'm saying? And I had, and I had him throw punches and whatever it was. It was a lot of shit talking. Don't get me wrong. Connor comes out. He always talks a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, Talks a lot of shit, and of course I, I talked back as well. You know, some of it, some of it was ticky tacky stuff, a little dirty stuff inside, so it did get a little ticky tacky at times. Like, you know, I got on my nerves a little bit, and Cortez had to give us a couple of different warnings, you know. Mm -hmm. But overall, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to match it for conditioning, but I was just glad that I was able to give him that work, you know. I, I felt, you know, I'm gonna be here for a while, you know, and uh, you know, I'll keep getting sharper and sharper. That's the way I go in camp. When was the last time you had did any work before that? What happened? I said, when, when was the last time you had gotten any boxing work in before that? Um, for my fight, four, four months before in, in March, you know, okay. uh, probably, oh, not March, my fight was early March, so probably the last week in February, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, well, so it was like, I did, actually, you know, I did a couple of rounds in New York before I left. I did like a, a, a handful of rounds with a friend of mine uh, in New York, mm -hmm. just, uh, just, just to kind of just start seeing some punches, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't very intense, but it was just to, just to kind of start seeing some punches, but I had, I had to break out all my equipment mm -hmm. and whatnot, you know? So basically, so, actually, yeah, so basically, so basically, you had to come up off the street. Basically, you came up off the street to spar eight rounds. Yeah, but, you know, we we some, some, a little bit of road work. It wasn't totally off the street, but it was closer to being off the street than closer to being a ready for any kind of fight. I'll tell you that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and it was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we get that done. I finished up, and Connor came up to me and said, "Hey, listen, I'd like for you to to stay in the camp if you could. I appreciate the work." So I thought like it was cool. I really didn't know that. You know, behind my back, all kinds of things were being said. Like, it came to my attention when I saw an interview with Tim Bradley, who was in the, in the training camp with us as one of the spar partners, the 20 year old Irish kid. Mm -hmm. And so I saw recently an interview with him where he said, Connor had mentioned before I ever got to camp that when Mal and I get here, it's going to be a fight. It's not a spar, it's going to be a fight. And you're going to know it's going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of sparring they do in MMA, but in boxing, Sparring is always a fight when it's this kind of training camp. So when he came out in tents, it didn't really like surprise me. You know what I'm saying? I, it was kind of what I expected. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. I wasn't able to match a lot of the intensity, but I was better than him. But because he wasn't able to match a lot of the intensity, he was able to be busy the first time. But I tell you, know, he, he, did, he probably did better. But again, because of my ring intelligence, I was able to still put him in positions where he, he was working harder than he even needed to, and he didn't realize it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So again. I felt like in doing that, I did my job, you know? But still, I felt like I'm going to be here a while, and it's going to be a camp, and I'm going to get in better and better shape. And, of course, if I get in better shape, I'm going to also get a lot sharper, you know? Mm -hmm. That started the day. Remember, I'm only here for this particular week, and I have to leave the next Monday. You know what I'm saying? So I'm only there for a few days. So I'm figuring they're going to use me Thursday. they got to do box every two days in camp. That's just how it works. Saturday is the next boxing day. Mm -hmm. I figure, okay, i got to be ready for Saturday. I'm going to be a little sharper Saturday. And then Monday, I'm going to leave for a week, you know? Mm -hmm. So... Saturday comes, and they give us one of the old random time changes that Connor likes to do. They tell us to be at the gym at 3. So, okay, we got to get ready. You know, we got to be at the gym at 3. Mm -hmm. We're at the gym at 3. Foley Malanji is not sparring Saturday. Huh. So, you know, I'm leaving Monday, and I'm leaving for a week. I just gave you eight rounds Thursday. Even though you probably had to work a little harder than you thought, you definitely got the better of it. Mm -hmm. But it, was all, it wasn't because you were better. It was because you had to work harder. And so you know you're going to have to work to, to box me. It's not going to be a picnic. Mm -hmm. And because of that, now you skipped me already. So you made me come across the country for one sparring session, knowing I had to leave Monday. <laughs> nah, bro. No, that's not, that wasn't the plan, my man. That wasn't the plan. You skipped Saturday because there's bitch in you. Okay, so that's, now it starts. The whole rumors that you hear about Connor, the whole rumors that you hear about that he's a front runner, all the rumors that you hear about with an ADS fight that he quit, um, when things get hard, he doesn't bite down, he quits. You know, there's, everybody can be a fighter in their own mind. Man, let me explain something about a fighter and to what, what a fighter is to me or what a fighter is to other fighters. Right. Round one, everybody's strong. When we're talking around the corner about to get into street fights or two fights, everybody's strong. Everybody's strong in those moments. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a fighter around one. Everybody's a fighter when a sh when a ship starts pops off. All right. But the real fighter comes out when you're hurt, when you're tired, when you're uncomfortable. Ninety nine percent of people, when they're in that situation, will turn into a bitch. <laughs> Even some fighters will turn into a bitch. Mm. But some fighters will dig in and fight when they're in that position. Mm -hmm. Connor 
He's basically here for our books. You know what I'm saying? He, what, when he's got the advantage, especially in mixed martial arts, where he's better than most of the guys he's fighting, he never, he never has to reach the point of discomfort. He never has to reach the point of, of, of fading or, or being a little uncomfortable or whatnot. So you never see that part of him. But when you have seen it in the part you've seen it, you see the bitch come out of it. Mm. That, my friend, you can't teach. That's genetic. You either have balls or you don't have balls. Wow. And, and those can't be taught. Mm. No, I'm going to stay with this because it's going to come back later in this conversation. Okay. So say that he's with me. He's still being introduced to boxing amateur kid. Okay? Knowing I'm leaving Monday for a week. So I said, that's fine, whatever. I'll just work the floor and that's it. I leave Monday. Two days today, so I leave Monday. When I have to work, I'm going to go see a fight week. Now, you saw the picture he put up after the first sparring. Mm -hmm. It was the heat sparring his back picture, you know. Yeah. The thing about the eight round, the, first, the thing about the eight rounds we did the Thursday, I put my, I was putting my hands behind my back, he was putting his hands behind his back. We were both talking a lot of trash. And like I said, his intensity probably carried a little bit for him. But he had to work for it. He had to work for it. It wasn't as easy as it probably should have been for him, because mm -hmm. he doesn't know that a lot of times I'm putting him in positions where he has to work harder than he thinks he does. He, he thinks he has to work harder than he actually does, and he ends up working harder than he actually has to, mm -hmm. because he doesn't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, maybe he was a little more uncomfortable than he would have liked, but he did good on the first sparring session, you know? Mm -hmm. But, the hands behind his back picture already set off a red flag to me, saying, okay, this guy is willing to, uh, you know, put all the sparring partners in situations where they look bad, which, maybe for anybody else, they don't have a big name, so the media's not gonna come looking for them, but for me, I have a big name in this business, and automatically, when you put up a picture like that, the media is going to start hounding me because they know who I am and they know me as a name in the business. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to create this friction, you know, because I have to sign in on disclosure to be in camp if I want to get paid. But at the same time, now you're putting these pictures up, it's going to cause a media avalanche to come my way. Mm -hmm. You just don't put the pictures up, you make it much easier for me to honor the NDA. I mean, I, wanna, I, wanna, I would honor training camp athletes anyway, even without the NDA. To be honest, I've always done it. I mean, you can look through 20 years I boxed, you, you'll never find a sparring, a sparring story with me and a sparring partner, you know what I'm saying? Just, mm -hmm. just, just, just because they are staying in the gym. And I've, had a lot, I've got a lot of experience in sparring with, the, with some of the best fighters in the world, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you'll never see a story because that kind of stuff always stays behind closed doors. You know, but so let's put that out. So all we brought up Garcia, I'm dealing with the media, you know, trying to, you know, ask you questions about their things behind the back. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are confused by it. Some people are saying, oh, kind of trying to punk me. Some people are saying, you know, how did it go? Did he handle you? It looks like he kind of handled you and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Listen, the picture itself doesn't really tell you anything because, you know, we were both doing that kind of stuff. The picture itself doesn't really tell you anything. But like I said, Connor had a little more intensity in the first ball round because, you know, he was conditioned enough to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, during this whole week off, I go to New York, and something inside me is telling me, I just, I just didn't get rubbed the right way from these guys, you know what I'm saying? Between the fact we didn't spark Saturday, uh, flying your way across country, uh, he talked a lot of shit uh, after the first session. Literally, he talked more shit than I anticipated because... This, this last Friday's uh, All Access, behind closed doors, even after he kissed my ass and told me good work and to my, in person after sparring, he kissed my ass and told me good work in person mm -hmm. and told me uh, he likes me, love for me to stay in camp. Behind my back, with the All Access cameras, he went and said, hey, he kicked my ass, that's all you're good for, you kicked my ass, or whatever he said, I don't remember the quote that it was. But, right. So as a matter of fact, after that first sparring, he was ballsy, but not to my face, you know, which is fine. I mean, all I'm saying is, it's not that you have to be bullied to my face, but if we spar and we were sparring then, it's more like just show me who you are. You know what I'm saying? Don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't act like my friend to my face if you're not my friend. You know what I'm saying? That's all mm -hmm. I'm saying. Like, I, I, I'd rather you be the person you are, you know? Yeah. And I respect you more for it, even if you don't like me, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I'll, uh, so I get away, and you know, I, obviously I get m m bombed by the media. I think you were in New York as well. Yeah, I was there. Yep. <laughs> so you saw, like, I was getting jumped on by every, every media personality out there wanting to know what's up. Absolutely. But, no, so it wasn't easy. You know, I had to, like, kind of dodge the questions. I had to kind of keep the questions in a manner where I'm defending myself, trying to make myself not look bad, mm -hmm. but also trying to make Connor look good. Right. And how do I do that? How do I play, how do I toe that line? Like, without those pictures, it would be much easier to to pick up to pick up Connor to, to play him up big to the media mm -hmm. because I would have to defend myself I would have to, to big him up and now I have to defend myself while also trying not to knock him while also trying to big him up you know it's like I was caught in a, in a kind of a, in a, in a I was caught in kind of a, a tough situation there you know it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was a little bit of a, 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 a it felt like a maze a little bit you know what I'm saying so mm -hmm. well I um uh, 
I, I, I dealt with it all week, you know what I mean? I, I felt like I did okay, okay, you know, people had kept asking me about the punching power, I mean, it was like, I mean, on, on social media, it was like blasphemy when I said he was the hardest puncher I ever sparred, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I know everybody wants to hear, like, the guy hits, like, a four as hammer, but he doesn't, you know what I'm saying? He, but he doesn't hit soft, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to tell you he can't punch, right. you know, I'm just going to tell you that, you know, there's guys that have hit me a lot harder. Like, mm -hmm. he's not even close to the hardest puncher that I've been hit by. But he's also not somebody that you want to just let him and give you a, let him, give him just a free shot either. Mm -hmm. You know, so I felt like I did it in a way where, you know, I, I didn't do it to insult him. It was just an, uh, an honest answer. But, and again, and again, if he doesn't put these pictures out, I'm probably not going to get a lot of these questions. So some of the reason I'm getting some of these questions is because he's putting these pictures out. So, so you know, he also brings this on himself. But I didn't insult him when I said he's not the hardest puncher or he's not a, a super hard puncher. He's a, he's, a, he's a good puncher, but he's not a super hard puncher. That was just an honest answer. Mm -hmm. And... I don't see why it should have been blasting to all these groupies on social media where it's like, oh, like, what do you want me to tell you? You want me to make it up for you that he's the hardest guy that ever, ever hit me? Like, he's the he's hardest puncher that ever hit me? I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you just because you want to hear it. I mean, I'm going to tell you what it is, you know? So, so, you know, that's what it was. And, and he's not a soft puncher. You know, he's just not the monster puncher either, you know? I thought I so, thought I thought it was I thought you were respectful in 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 your answers yeah. and and everything. So yeah, I, I, I did my best because, like I said, I'm pulling the line here because I gotta I, I gotta not share on myself now because I also gotta defend myself with these pictures he's putting up. You know that picture that he had put up. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the week goes by, Brown goes goes by. One thing I, that that I made sure to do because these guys I just did not get a good feeling about these people now. When I went away, when I went back to New York, I made sure I jogged every single day to get my conditioning up. And I even did got five rounds of sparring in with my buddy Thomas Lomana, Conflict Lomana. Mm -hmm. uh, I did five rounds of sparring, and uh, you know he's a he's a he's a sharp little contender. You know, just to, just to keep my eyes sharp, just to keep my you know my reflex going. And of course, the sparring every the, the the running every day, a little bit of sparring gets my conditioning up. Mm -hmm. My body is getting into a little bit of rhythm. You know, just to keep me sure, I get into a little bit of rhythm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they didn't know. I get I fly back the next Monday. Uh, Showtime will be back. Mm -hmm. As I said, it was both those Monday to Monday flights to Showtime. Showtime crew paid for them. Mm -hmm. And um, I get off the plane and I'm told that I'm boxing 12 rounds the next day. So mm -hmm. I said, all right. I mean, in my mind, I said. I said, that's really funny. I said, no sparring partner in any training camp is ever, ever, ever expected to go 12 rounds with the guy who's fighting. The guy who's fighting usually goes 12 rounds, and in my camps, and I'm sure anybody else who's done these training camps will tell you, you do 12 rounds in training camp, but well, you do them with about two, three, maybe even four different sparring partners. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you alternate them so that they stay fresh and you don't. You get the best work that way. You also risk getting your ass kicked because these guys are all good, pretty good fighters, and they can, they're fresh, and you're not. But that brings a mental toughness out of you. It makes you sharp. And makes you ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No one sparring partner is ever expected to go 12 rounds because most of the time the sparring partners aren't in shape enough to go 12 rounds, and also they're not good enough to go 12 rounds. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to go 12 rounds, which is something I never heard of in my life mm -hmm. that the sparring partner comes in and goes 12 rounds because usually the sparring partner is not in as good a shape as the fighter in camp. The fighter in camp is in very good shape when you get ready for a fight. Mm -hmm. But I almost smiled underneath my skin because I. I I knew I had, got, I had conditioned my body the week before. I knew I had done that. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I was mad, but I knew I was ready. You know, I, I knew like, okay, you know, I, I'm much more ready than I was two weeks ago. You know, right? At least, you know, even if I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in great fight shape yet, I'm definitely much better conditioned now. And I felt sharper, you know, from having box boxing cornflakes. I felt pretty sharp boxing cornflakes, you know, the, a few days before. Mm -hmm. So the next day, I arrived in the next night. They didn't change the time. It was a 9 p.m. sparring, which paid 9 p.m. The, the next day, which was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I get to the gym, and you got like all kinds of uh, all kinds of people there. You got some celebrities there. Like you got like, like you got like a crew there. Like it's not like and and, and it kind of irritated me because nobody's allowed to even have a trainer in the corner. You're not allowed to bring anybody into the gym. When you walk into the gym, you have to drop your phones into a box so that nobody nobody can record on a sneak. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do anything. Nobody can bring anybody into the gym even to help themselves out. I couldn't bring a trainer into camp even to work tight with me on my own face. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Mm. So, I know I show up and he's got like a, a crew of people there that witnessed this sparring on this particular night. And, again, it irritated me because it's not about privacy because now you have a bunch of people here. You're, you're, you're treating this like it's a, it's a spectacle. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I know what, I know, I realized immediately what was up. I realized, okay, bro, you don't think I'm in shape to go 12. You realize I got tired the last time we were eight. 
Now you you up you up the eighty to twelve round. You've been training the entire week. You don't think I've been training though. You don't think I've been training. And you say you figure there's no way Paul is gonna go twelve. You he barely had the energy to go your lifetime. So I'm gonna invite all these people over. Yeah, Dana White there, yeah, Lorenzo Petita there, you know, yeah, it was people that were like that were there that, you know, that that you know, pretty established people in the business and pretty established people just around Las Vegas, you know? Yeah. Uh, his age was there. And so so I, I already knew what it was. I said, This guy doesn't think I'm gonna be able to go twelve because I you know, I had a tough time with the I had a tough time with the pace of the eight. He thinks he's gonna stop me in the gym right now in front of all these people and spread this word. Mm. I said, Man, if you're in for something tonight. I said, man, I was pissed off when I got in. I was pissed off the day before when they told me 12. Mm. I was pissed off as I warmed up that night. I was pissed. Wow. <laughs> round one starts. Round one starts. I immediately start shit talking. I immediately come out with a purpose. I immediately start shit talking. I immediately start taking it to him. Mm. He was honestly, he hung in there for the first five. I'm not going to lie. He hung in there. He even returned some good fire. He hung in there. But I was clearly, it was clearly a purpose. And now, all the things that I was doing two weeks ago, I was putting him in position to make him feel like he had to work harder. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't work that hard, so it was all an illusion to make him work harder. Mm -hmm. Now I was forcing him to work harder while also working harder myself. Mm -hmm. So I was doing both. And the shots were landing. My jab was sharper. I was talking shit the whole time. I was making sure to call him a bitch and make sure he reminded what a bitch that he is. Mm -hmm. I was talking. But honestly, the first five rounds, he was hanging in there. You know, I'm tough. You know, I'm, I'm going to give him credit. You know, I'm tough. Mm -hmm. But of course, like I told you earlier, what did I tell you a real fighter is? A real fighter is not in the first round. The real fighter is, as a fight wears on, what do you do when you're hurting? Mm -hmm. When you're fatigued? When you are uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Most people, non-fighters especially, will turn into a bitch. Mm. Some fighters will also turn into a bitch. Mm -hmm. What do you do? That is the true character of a fighter. When now things are uncomfortable for you, how do you react? Mm -hmm. Well, round first five rounds, he hung himself as he could. He hung in there, even returned some good fire, like I said. Round six comes around, this guy becomes very, very hittable. Mm. Some of the awkward movement disappears, he becomes very, very hittable. Mm. And I start putting more weight on my shot because I'm saying, you know what? This guy's starting to get hittable, man. I'm not missing this guy. Mm. He's not coming back with the counter as much. I'm going to the body hard now. I'm ripping to the head hard. I'm, I'm jab, I'm staying with my jab. He's just trying to fire here and there, a couple of shots he did get in there, but now there's fewer and further between. Mm -hmm. I'm hitting up the body, do I shit you not, Ben? Yeah, I felt like it was like when Mike Tyson fought Terrell, fought, fought Terrell. You know Mike Tyson fought Terrell Biggs? And there's that post-fight interview where he said, yeah, I have to feel the body shots inside. And the guy said, well, what do you mean you felt the body shots inside? What are you talking about? And he said, no, I felt he was feeling like, a, he, was, he sounded like a girl. And the inside, like, ah, ah, ah. you know, like the body. And, you know, I, I remember Mike Tyson during this interview. Because every time I would hit him to the body, mm -hmm. He would give me like, Ugh. like, Ugh. you know, I remember him with a counter uppercut inside when he tried to throw away a straight left hand and he fell into me. And in his ear, I said, you like those, right? I said, I said, they don't give you those in MMA. You need to start getting used to those now in boxing. I said, those feel differently, you pussy. Those feel different, you know? And little by little, I could see the bitch in this guy coming out. He was talking last like, at first he was like matching my talking. Now he didn't want to waste energy talking because he didn't have the energy to fight back while I'm talking, you know? Mm -hmm. And... I'm, I'm pinching at him, I'm, more, I'm, 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 comp I'm complaining to him, like, yo, bro, where's the work? You know, he was moving away, I, I was literally, he moved away from me, I'd be like, bro, where you going? I'd say, where you going, bro, where you going? I'd say, where you going, where you, going? Where you going, you know? Like, well, just, just give him, being a nuisance in there while I'm, I'm, I'm throwing these punches. And yeah, the shots he's returning here and there, fewer and further between, fewer mm. and further between. And when I'm there, I'm, I get inside with him. I mean, that's why this is a picture that he ends up putting out. I get inside with him and I'm talking shit, and inside he tries to, you know, whatever he tries to do, you know, he tries to do his thing. I'm not going to tell you everything, because technically I still want to be ethical um, on this. I don't want to give you his tactics. But in the end, right. I'm talking shit, and he shoves it. He, he on the inside, and he shoves me, and I, and I try to hold myself up. Like, I kind of stumble on the shove, and I go down by the ropes, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like, it was just shove, like, even Cortez warned him and all that, you know? Like, it was... And I remember getting up from it, and, and look at him as Cortez is warning and saying, guys, keep it clean. As, as Cortez is talking, I'm talking over Cortez, and I'm like, you needed that break, right, little bitch? I was like, you were looking for any break you could get, right? Right, little bitch, little pussy? I was like, ain't no breaks in here, bro. I was like, you're going to keep getting punished tonight. Yeah. And I kept taking it to him. I kept taking it to him. I kept taking it to him. Honestly, 
He took a night. He took a mean one to about around ten. He tried to return to fire, but he took a he took a mean one to about around ten. Mm. Like I, I, he took some good shots, like to about around ten. Now he's wearing basically a football helmet as, as a headgear, so you know that's that's nice and protective. Me, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if I get mucked up or anything. You know, mm. uh, I wear an open face headgear and wild less padding. You know, I feel I, I, that's the way I choose to spar. I choose to spar like a man. I don't choose to spar like a bitch. You know, so so um honestly after about ten, though I'll be honest, I would start. I, I'm saying, like, eight or nine, I'm actually starting to question this guy. Like, is he going to quit on me? Is he not going to quit on me? Like, mm -hmm. I'm starting to question him. He's definitely not fighting. He's not fighting me anymore. You know, he's not fighting the same way, definitely. He's, like, looking for answers. He doesn't have any. And I, I can see the bitch in his eye. Like, you know what I mean? Every fight I was going to talk about when you see the bitch in your opponent's eye. You know what I mean? I can see the bitch in his eye. Mm -hmm. You know, he was talking like... He was, instead of talking around, he tried to make faces at me. When I, I, I would jab him in his face and try to say, like, get that stupid look off your face. And I'd bump him with his head. And I'd say it again. I just kept saying, get that stupid look off your face. And I'd jam him again. I didn't make a face at me. I wasn't talking about any faces he was making. I just didn't like his face. The stupid look on his face was an actual face. I don't like his face. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to, I wanted to just mush his face every chance I got, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so we get to honestly about ten, and I honestly at at tenish at the tenish. Actually, actually, I'm gonna tell you one more thing. After the eighth round, I started yelling at Dana White between rounds. Between rounds, I started yelling at Dana White, and he's sitting there at ringside, and I start telling him, I said, "This is the best you got." I was like, "This little bitch is the best you got." I said, "I was working all last week." I said, "24 hours ago, I was on a cross country flight here." Wow. I said, "I barely, I barely done any sport." at all all these months. And this guy's on you back. He has no balls. I said, you got no ball. And I know Connor is even across the ring. I mean, I'm, I'm in my corner and my dad is right outside the ring. I'm yelling at Dan. I don't know Connor is. I just keep, just keep saying, he has no balls. He has no character. This guy has no character. Yeah. I was like, and I was in my mind, I'm thinking, when well, you show character, when in this situation, are you fighting me back? And he wasn't doing that, you know? Yeah. So, whatever. Now I'm going to fast forward back to the 10th round. In the 10th round, I get the better of the two. Well, I'm starting to feel it now. You know, now you're feeling a cross-country flight. You're starting to feel like, you know, you're still not in great shape. You're in better shape, but you may not be in 12-round shape. And to his credit, he came back at 11 and 12 and, and did very good. He, I'm going to say he got a lead court 11 and 12 and he won them. Mm -hmm. And to his credit, he dug down in those 11 and 12. But I still had to question him. Did he dig down because he saw less fire coming from me? Or did he dig down because he dug down? You know, that was something I wanted to find out in the next sparring session, you know? Mm -hmm. Because the next sparring session, there was going to be no jet lag. The next sparring, I was only going to continue to get sharper and sharper now. The next sparring session, it was going to be less, it was going to be less fatigue on my part. Every time I got in there, I was going to be in better and better shape. So was Connor, did Connor's balls go bigger in 11 and 12 because he, he didn't see me taking it to him? Because then he's still a bitch. Or would Connor's balls have still gotten big in 11 and 12 if I was taking it to him? Mm. Because when I was taking it to him, Connor didn't have any balls. Mm. You know, so, so my, I, I ended up with... I respected the fact that he was able to come on strong in 11 and 12, mm -hmm. but my curiosity for the next morning session was going to be, is this guy, does this guy have any balls when I'm going to get to you to take it to him the entire time the next time we spar? Because the next time we spar, you're going to get no breaks at all. Because the next time we spar, I'm going to be even sharper, I'm going to be even better. Because let's face it, Connor got a little sh better between the first and second sparring. Because the first sparring, he, if, the first, if the guy who I sparred the first time around would have showed up on the second sparring, he would have got beat the shit out of every round, even including the early rounds. Mm. But the only rounds the second spar, he's on the top. Mm. But my question was still, my, my thing is this, I am going to progress faster than you. This is what I've done in my life for a living for 20 years. So I, my sharpness is going to multiply at a faster rate than your sharpness is. Mm -hmm. So my curiosity was every time we spar now, I want to see where this guy's going to hang because it's going to get to the point where he's going to be getting the shit beat out of him every single round. Mm. Mm -hmm. He didn't get it, it should be out of every single round on Tuesday, but we were working our way towards there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so my, my question in my mind was going to be, as we progress, how much character is this guy going to show me? And how much improvement is this guy going to show me? Because the, the percentage of improvement he's going to be able to give to the percentage of improvement I'm going to give is incomparable. Mm -hmm. Because it's something I've done for 20 years of my life. I'm going to get much sharper than you're going to get. Mm. If we train every single day. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the things I left off. And honestly, after the spar, I thought we were cool. I really did. We took a picture together. He said good work. The the the, the teams gave us, like, you know, gave us a hand and all that stuff. And it was cool, you know. Um, it was all good. 
finished up everything, go to the dressing room, Connor tells me, Dr. Connor in the dressing room, he says, hey, good work. And I said, uh, yo, man, good work, man. I said, uh, you do me a favor, dude. I said, Doug, you know, at this point, I thought we were cool. I thought everything was bad. I should definitely bury it. I said, I probably could lower my guard a little bit in this camp and feel like I'm part of the team, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just, I was open with him. I said, hey, bro, but listen, do me a favor. I said, stop putting up the pictures on social media because I'm not one of the average sparring partners. The media will call me and hound me if you put up pictures with me in, in social media. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, oh, and, and, and I said and it's very difficult to defend myself while also making you look good. I want to make you look good. I don't want to talk shit about you on, 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 in interviews. I'm trying to pump you, but I don't want to be put in a position where I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jeopardize my own reputation because I had to defend the picture that you put up. While also trying to make you look good. I said, you, you, it's just a tough balancing act. I don't want to feel like going that line. I said, I said, do me a favor, bro. I said, just watch it with the pictures. And I'm not the average sparring partner. They know who I am, you mm-hmm. know? And they're mm-hmm. going to call me. Mm-hmm. At that point, I felt like, and that's when you're like, two people are cool and like a respectable fighter, a respectable man, like a respectable man would say, oh, Paul, you know what? You got it, man. You know what? You're, you're right. You know, we just did 12 hard rounds. You, you just, in his mind, he should be saying, you just fucked me up, so I should respect you. I think he should be saying that in his mind, even though he wouldn't admit it. Right. But he should at least be saying, like, you know what, like, at, at least he should be saying, you know, yeah, I got you, man. You know what, you're right. Let's just keep this work in the gym, and uh, and we'll continue to work together, and it'll get better and better. Mm-hmm. Instead, he gave me, like, a weird reaction. He gave me, like, a weird reaction. He, gave, he goes, well, he gave me, like, a weird smirk smile, and he goes, like, well, I don't know, Paulie. And I was, like, I, I mean, I was waiting for him to say, I, I'm kidding, because I, I really didn't think he was going to be serious. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, boy. And he kind of starts walking towards the showers. And I'm like, and he walks by me. Like, he doesn't turn around. He walk, and he's like talking. And he's walking away. Like, we got some good ones in 11 and 12. He goes, I don't know. Those last two, we got some good picks. But I'm thinking to myself, I mean, I'm waiting for him to turn around, Ben. I swear to God, I was waiting for him to turn around because I don't think anybody could just be this much of a jerk off in real life. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. there's no cameras here, just me and you. I'm waiting for him to turn around and say, nah, I'm just walking with you. Don't worry about it, Paul. You know, no more pictures. Right. And I was waiting not to say that. Like, like, I really didn't think he was serious. Mm. Like, he's walking away from me, man. We got 11 or 12. We got some good ones. I really didn't think, like, there's no way he's this much of a jerk-off. I mean, no human being can be this much of a jerk-off. Instead, he just walks away from me, goes into the showers, and that's it. I stayed by the lockers. So, now he's away from me, and I yelled into the locker room. I said, all right, bro. I said, you post whatever shit you want. Uh, this time, I'm going to answer you back on social media. I'm telling you, I'm going to put you on blast if you put me on blast again. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah, I mean, and that was it, you know. And I wanted to shower myself afterwards in my own shower. I, I, we got dressed, we left, and that was it. That was good. Mm-hmm. And that day, I wake up, I have a DM. I have a direct message on Twitter mm-hmm. from Conor McGregor. And I obviously, I can prove this because I have it in my phone. And the direct message is no word at all, but there's two pictures of me on the campus, and it was from that pushdown in the eighth round. Because oh, when that push down, he needed to break, not me. He pushed me down because he needed to break, by the way. Mm-hmm. That, was during, that was in the midst of the ass beating he was catching. Mm-hmm. So... I, it's just two pictures, but he doesn't say anything on the, on the DM. He just sends you two pictures, like basically letting me know he has the pictures. So I, I quickly check my, my Twitter, my timeline, to check if he's posted these on, on public viewing. Mm-hmm. And he had it. It was just a picture of him and me, like kind of squaring off in a weird, in a weird awkward picture, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and he didn't post those. So I said, okay, that's pretty cool. I said, all right, he's letting me know he has them, but he didn't post them publicly. So he's letting me know, like, okay, I got them, but I listened to you, and, you know, but to be cool. I felt like translating it. He didn't write anything, so I didn't, he, I didn't know what he said. But I took it, again, I, I took it in a genuine, honest way. I took it in a, you know, he's, he, he's trying to tell me that he has these pictures, but he's not going to post them. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, in my heart, I was saying, okay, man, he's cool. You know, it's all right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's good. It's all love. And, you know, we're going to be all right. Mm-hmm. That was it. I didn't see him that day. Because it wasn't a sparring day, and I didn't train out of the time they trained or whatnot. You know? So it was all good. That was Wednesday of this week. Thursday is supposed to be another sparring day. Remember, every two days is sparring. Yeah. So, again, sparring is scheduled for 9 p.m. But they do one of the old typical, oh, we're going to change the time on you last minute. So at 2 p.m., the entire house gets a, a, a group message. The entire house, meaning the entire house that I'm staying at, the crack house, <laughs> gets, a, gets, a, gets, a, gets a group message saying, um, everybody be at the gym at 3.30 for sparring. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say who's sparring, doesn't say anything. Hmm. Now, I'm not sure if it's me that's going to spar or somebody else is going to spar. You know, doesn't say anything. Doesn't mention anything. Not to mention they also change the time now from 9 p.m. to 3.30. We have an hour and a half. Hmm. So I start getting my stuff together or whatever. And, you know, we're going to go to the gym. 
we get to the gym a little earlier, and I start warming up really hard. Like, I start warming up, I get into a good warm-up, good shadow box, I have my hands wrapped, because I'm a little sore from, honestly, the 12 rounds I did a couple days before, so I want to get in a good hard work, uh, good hard warm-up so that my blood is flowing in my body in case I get picked as far. Mm -hmm. um, finally, Connor's team arrives, and his trainer, one of his trainers says, Connor is not sparring today. Remember what I said about the bitch check marks, Ben? Remember what I said about earlier? Mm -hmm. So he said, Connor's not sparring today. Check mark bitch goes off in my head again. <laughs> Every time we sparred, two days later, you cancel sparring. Wow. Okay, so Connor's not sparring at all now after we've gone 12 with me. Mm -hmm. With an off the plane 12, with an non great shape 12, me, with an non great shape me, you decide you're going to skip your sparring for Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Fine. The bitch check mark goes off my head, but I'm not gonna complain about it. I'm not saying anything. You know, I'm thinking like, okay, it's all good. Mm. So what do I do? I've already warmed up very well. I've got my hands wrapped. Before I get into the next part, I'm gonna tell you how the UFC gym is set up. Mm. The UFC facility has the first floor is the, is the conditioning facilities and like the the, the, the rehab facilities. They have the massage areas, the cryotherapy. They have the the um the uh, the, the running stuff. They have um what is it called? The treadmills. Mm. All the ropes. All the conditioning factors of the gym are on the first floor. Right. The second floor of the gym has the cage. It has the ring. It has the bags. It has the combat portion of the gym. It's a nice facility. Mm -hmm. So, when I get out of the ring and they tell you I'm not sparring, they say nobody's sparring, I ask one of the trainers, I say, hey man, uh, can you guys uh, put my bag gloves on? I said, I'm going to hit the bag today. You know, I was already warmed up. I didn't feel like I needed to warm up anymore. I had a good sweat going. I was going to hit the bag. And he says, no, you guys have to go downstairs because, because Connor has to work pads today, or mitts as some people call them, and... You guys can't watch or can't be here because he has to hit you. We have to work on some shots that he wants to hit you guys with. So if you guys see them, you know, you're going to know what's coming and we don't want you guys to see. Honestly, man, it's a little particular for me, but I would understand. Like, some people are trained in a very particular way. Mm. I don't do that, but I would totally understand. I would. I would totally understand mm. if... Uh, if, if, you, if, if some people are weird and they do that, and, and it's totally fine. With one exception, bro. One exception. Mm -hmm. You told me, you motherfuckers told me, told us to come to the gym at 3.30. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, the decision you made when you got to the gym. You know you weren't sparring when you woke up in the morning. <laughs> but you just caught decided that you're not going to say anything. You're going to force us all to the gym only to tell us we can't work out. Okay? <laughs> oh, God, I jerk off move by a jerk off team. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, again, how my balls are twisted? Because, like I said, he's not sparring, but I can't even work out. My yeah. schedule was for 9 p.m. anyway. I wasn't going to the gym at 3.30 unless they told me to go to the gym at 3.30. Mm -hmm. They told me to go to the gym at 3.30, and now I can't work out. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm fucking pissed. I'm fucking heated. I don't say anything. I eat it. But me and the spawn partners go downstairs, and I'm complaining. I'm venting. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking complaining to all of them, bro. I'm fucking telling them. I'm like, what, are we jerk offs? What is this shit? I said, we got, we got us. We're stuck in the middle of fucking ghetto in a crack house. That's where he takes us to live. And then, and why he's back and call for sparring, for not sparring. And then when he decides he's not sparring last minute, why we can't work out? Yo, bro, Ben, I've been in a million training camps. You know if you're sparring and you're not sparring when you wake up in the morning. Right. All right, bro? <laughs> right. He, 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 he didn't get to the gym and decide he wasn't sparring, okay? Mm -hmm. They knew they weren't sparring, but he still made us go to the gym and make sure to tell them not to train. Okay, mm -hmm. though, we couldn't train upstairs. Now, we couldn't work on our sharpness. Okay, and that's another thing that you got to gotta start to consider. You got to start to consider. He's trying to keep us, or me mainly, from not getting any sharper, okay? Mm -hmm. He's trying to keep us from not working on certain techniques myself because I'm only going to fuck him up worse and worse. If I, come, if I did what I did to him on Tuesday, off the fucking plane, and still week off working away in New York, and then still did what I did to him on Tuesday, how much worse is it going to be? I'm going to right to think that. It's going to get a lot worse. Mm. But you have in camp, make use of me. Don't treat me like a, like a jerk-off mm. when I got to go to the gym and then... You make me, you, t you won't tell me at the, once I'm at the gym, nah, nah, you, you can't work out here, you gotta go downstairs. So what am I doing downstairs? You want the treadmill? What the fuck am I gonna do? <laughs> so what I mean? I shadow box for like an hour, and then I, I, I ran like a half hour treadmill, you know, and, and that was it. You know, we didn't let him do shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I, uh, I finished the workout, I go into the locker room, and, uh, you know, I'm gonna go shower or whatever, mm -hmm. and, uh, 
my phone is going crazy. My phone is going nuts. Like, my phone is buzzing like crazy in my bag. So I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this phone? You know, it's like, it's like going to blow up on me. Mm -hmm. So I open it up, and I got text messages coming in, tweets coming in. I mean, everything's coming in. And I open this shit up. Everything was released. Wow. All the pictures he had DM'd me the day before. It was another shot of him landing a left hand, a nice left hand. Um, everything was released. So, so I said, wow. So he did that shit while you were at the gym? I don't know. He maybe did. Yeah, I guess he did it while I was at the gym because in the hour that I was working out, the hour and a half that I was working out, or a couple hours that I was working out, the pictures came out. You know. So, wow. <laughs> so, so I was like, wow. I was like, hey, including the the the, 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 the push down picture. You know, the, the push down picture. You mm -hmm. know where it looks like. You know, you're gonna make it look like you knocked me down. You know, it's like you say this is a push. Why are you even posting that? Like you know what happened. Me and you both know what happened. You obviously put a gag order on Joe Cortez because Cortez hasn't spoken up about the fact that it wasn't a knockdown. So they obviously made sure Cortez can't speak either. Mm. You know what I'm saying on this? Because anybody can reach out to Joe Cortez and ask him what that what happened during sparring on Tuesday. And he can tell you that it wasn't a knockdown. He won't tell you about the better of one because he probably can't speak on that. Mm -hmm. But but I mean, especially you can show on Connor, which is back to getting paid by. But he can definitely tell you it wasn't a legit knockdown. But why hasn't anybody gotten a call from Joe Cortez? I'll tell you why. Because these motherfuckers probably put a gag on, on Cortez as well, saying you're not allowed to speak about what happened on this sparring. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Now, so, so now, even though he spoke about our first sparring session, I bet you they gagged him for the second one because they knew that the question would come up to him was it not down legit or was it a push? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because how do you have, how do you not, how has nobody gotten a call from Joe Cortez? Right. That's not how we got a call from Joe Cortez. It doesn't make no sense. Joe was talking to the media when I got there. He even spoke freely about our first sparring session. Mm -hmm. So why is there all there's, no, there's no calls from Joe Cortez? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's the guy that can tell you there's no knockdown. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, again, it was. A lot of, so that day, especially my balls were flipping. When I when I got in the locker room and I saw that those pictures and I saw the reaction, I answered it. I said, you know, this is unethical or whatever. I, said, I don't know what I said, but I know the UFC facility has 24 hour surveillance cameras even in the gym. So I know, even though nobody's allowed to record, the surveillance cameras record everything. Mm -hmm. So I just put, hey, I said, you know what, these pictures are fun and dandy, basically, but you know, if you want to get the whole story. Why don't, you, why don't you put out the video from the from the UFC facility? They have the surveillance camera. It's all recorded. Mm. It's all recorded at the US. Put that shit out, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I got it on the hide. Put the whole 12 rounds out. Mm. I'm very comfortable. If you put out those whole 12 rounds, I'll look good. And you gotta understand the happy for this guy. He's done this before. He's done this before with Chris Van Heerden. He tried to, he goes as far as Chris Van Heerden, and then he tries to make like he kicked his ass. Luckily, Van Heerden had somebody who recorded the whole sparring. Mm -hmm. He learned from that experience, though. Now he makes sure nobody has anything and nobody can record anything. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. He's a little cop. You understand me? He's a little dirtbag. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like, mm -hmm. this, is like, this is like little dirtbag shit. You know what I mean? Where, like, let me sneak shit. Let me make it look like something when it's not. Like, who does that, bro? Mm -hmm. That's some little child shit. He's a little dirtbag. You know what I mean? Like, that's some little dirtbag shit right there, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, not only is it disrespectful, it's also, like, real, real cunty dirtbag shit, you know? Right. So, so, I'm like, I, at this point, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I can't win this. I said, you know, if he's able to put these kind of pictures out in a sparring session where he didn't get the better of it, I mean... I'm just gonna continue to fuck him up worse and worse every time we spar. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm gonna get better shape, I'm gonna get sharper. But he's gonna continue to have these pictures because, you know, in 10, 12 rounds of sparring, or whatever the fuck they make me spar, I don't know what the hell they made me spar anymore, you know, uh, he's gonna continue to get these, at least a, a handful of these kind of pictures and he'll just post these. Right. I said, it's gonna make me look horrible all camp. You know, you're gonna get to the fight if you're gonna think he, 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 he marauded me the entire camp. <laughs> Meantime, I'm smacking him up. You know what I mean? I, the, smack, the smack down has already begun. Mm -hmm. It's only getting a worse thing, but nobody's ever gonna know about it. So I was like, I have to go. I said, I have no choice. Because it's only gonna make. I can't win this. Mm -hmm. There's no way I can win. This. I think. I mean, I didn't come to camp trying to win anything. To be honest, I came to camp looking to be helpful. I came to camp with the best intentions. I came to camp. Like I said, I didn't even negotiate with them. I just took their first offer. I, I didn't ask for any sort of treatment. I came to camp with the best and the most honest intentions, but. Now it feels like either you're winning or you're losing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like it feels like, you know, it's them versus you, and you're always on your guard. And he's not the photographer. He's got the control of everything. It's just camp. I don't. I mean, there's no way I can I can't win this. It, 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 it's a situation where you're going to win or you're going to lose. I don't want it to be a situation where I'm going to win or I'm going to lose. I want it to just be a situation where I'm hopeful. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a situation where I'm going to win or I'm going to lose. And I can't win this because even if I fuck him up every single sparring session, 
the world will never know. And the world will actually be told the opposite of the story. It's not like the world will never know, but no, the world will never know nothing. We'll never know anything. The world will be made to think that he, he beat the shit out of me every training, every, every sparring session. So it's not like there's been sparring sessions, there's been camps in the gym where I'm fucking everybody up every day, every day, every day. But there's nobody talking about it, nobody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if I fuck you up every single day and nobody's talking about it, I don't even care. I would never talk about it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, again, look at my track record. I've never talked about sparring. Mm -hmm. So... I would, I would have no problem never talking about the fact that I would beat the shit out of him every day. Right. But now, nobody would talk about that, but the opposite would be perceived because of these pictures and the way he's made, portraying everything out to me. And like I said, he did it with Chris Van Heeren, and then he got played because he didn't realize Van Heeren had the whole video. It's the same situation here, except I don't know how the whole video. The UFC PI has the whole video. Mm -hmm. He's the same kind of little dirt bag. He's, he's literally a little dirt. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he's, he's a, he's like a, a, a little cunt, like a, like a little disrespectful dirt bag. You know, like, like, like it, it's, it's like, it's like childish shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I said to myself, I gotta go, man, that's it, I gotta go. And, uh, you know, I, I packed myself in my gym, the gym, and I went back to the house. The team was going to uh, get lunch, the, the the people in the crack house, I call them my team, but <laughs> we, we, weren't, we weren't in the crack house, you know, like, it was, uh, you spawned upon it, and a couple of the team members said, like, it's called man and whatnot. And I started venting in the car, but nobody obviously reacted to me, you know, because, you know, they're, they're part of the team, and they don't want to say, but I started venting in the car. I started saying, listen, guys, I said, I've been part of several different million dollar fights, okay? Mm -hmm. I know how to run a training camp. I've run many different training camps. Me and my team have always treated spawn partners good. We've always had to set up accordingly to a schedule. This is not the way it happens. This is some shit treatment, okay? And look at where we're fucking staying. Look at the fucking way we get treated. We went all the way to the gym today and we weren't allowed to work out, okay? There was no reason that they should have told us to come to the gym today. At this hour, we could have stayed on our same schedule and we would have been totally fine. Instead, they made us come to the gym at this hour just because they can and then told us we can't work out just because they can. Mm. Okay? This is that kind of childish shit. Okay, the other day, I got off a plane and in, less than, in 24 hours, I'm sparring 12 rounds. Okay? I feel like I'm up against it every single day. It's a little childish thing that I gotta deal with every single day. I gotta have my guard up every single day. That's, the, that's mentally draining and fatiguing. I wanna feel like I'm part of this team. I don't wanna feel like I'm an enemy within, within the camp and I always gotta be on guard because it's not a comfortable feeling to live in a house like that, to be in a camp like that. You know, I, I, it's just not cool, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I go fuck him up every day, I still won't be comfortable though, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. I, 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 I start like I start complaining in the car. I so I bring up the fact of of the, of the house again. I said I always put my 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 spar partners in solid living conditions, hotels most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nobody will ever complain about the way where I was housing my spar partners ever, or the food, or everything. My spar partners were always taken care of. I said you got you guys in a fucking crack house, bro. <laughs> we're in the middle of nowhere in like a crack house. Are you kidding me? I said we gotta we gotta be at his beck and call, including at his Call, he told us, no, you don't have to do nothing today. You know what I'm saying? What kind of shit is this, bro? Mm. What is this shit? I said, you guys have no experience with this shit, but I do, and I've been on the other side of this. I know how to treat people. This guy's a dirtbag, bro. His team is a dirtbag. His team's a bunch of, his team's a bunch of dirtbags. Mm. Nobody does this shit. We live in that crack house, and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, I said. I said, maybe he's just a cheap fuck. Maybe it's a budgeting situation. <laughs> and you say, you know what? We have a budget, and we're not going to spend more than this. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And you know what? I said, Everybody has a right to have a budget. And I said, if, that, if that's the case, I would still respect it. Mm -hmm. That's how much patience I have. Except for one fact. It's not about budgeting because the motherfucker is driving around a lime green renting Lamborghini. Okay? <laughs> so he, he's squirting on a Lamborghini in a renting camp. It's his money. He can do what he wants. But now you're screwing to me that it's not about budget once you're renting Lamborghinis in camp. Because you're going to go to the club. You're not pulling up in front of the club. Mm -hmm. You're not pulling up in front of a ballet restaurant. You're going to the gym and back, kid. So, at the end of the day, you don't need a Lamborghini. You can drive a Prius, you can drive a uh, Jeep 4, you can drive, drive whatever you want. Right. You don't need a Lamborghini camp. But if it's your choice to get a Lamborghini camp, it's your money, and you have all the right to do that. But then, you can't play us like you're on some sort of budget. Right. So now, I look at the Lamborghini, and then I look at the way he's housing these people in a crack house in the middle of nowhere, in a, in a hot area, in a ghetto area, and I say to myself, bro, it's about status with this guy. He don't respect no one if they have no status. Mm. He's a piece of shit, okay? He has no respect for human life, 
okay? This is not somebody, there's no way this was somebody who was on welfare four or five years ago. This is impossible because somebody who was that on welfare and living that poorly such a short time ago would never treat people in this condition. Would never do it because he would, it would still be so fresh in his mind. There is no way. So the motherfucker, there's also holes in his story. Always. The way you live your life always proves there's holes in your story if it's not according to what the way you have the story set up. There is no way this guy was as poor as everybody tried to play out to be. Okay? There's no way because he would have more sympathy for people less fortunate than him. Me, I had to do it to deal with it, but I got money. So, you know what? At that point, the combination of all these things that I just explained, I said, fuck this. It's only going to continue. It's only going to get worse. They're prying and prying at me, trying to make me leave. So that when I do leave, they can say they ran out of actual champion and it'll look good. I said, there is no way I can get to August 20th when it's came for break. August 20th. There's no way I can get to it because every single day is going to be a new surprise for these guys. Mm. And I don't want to wake up thinking what surprise do they have set for me today. I don't want to deal with that anymore. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I boxed for 15 years professionally, for 15 and a half years of my life. I didn't do that to go through this kind of shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I left. I said, I felt bad for you guys. I told them, I said, you guys have to deal with it. I mean, it's unfortunate. I said, me, I don't have to deal with it. I'm out of here. I said, I wish you guys the best. It was nice to meet you guys. I really, I feel sympathy for those guys. Those were good guys in that house, man. All those guys that in that house were good guys. Mm -hmm. The team players, for Connor, and I'm sure they're going to continue to be hopeful, but, but. I know the deal, bro. I was there. I know the deal. I know the level of piece of shit this guy is. I know the level of piece of shit that they are in general. I know how they treat and, and I know how they treat people, even people that are close to them. Okay? It's all about status. Mm -hmm. It's in Hollywood, bro. This is real life. Okay? This is real life. Take that Hollywood shit back to Hollywood. Okay? This is real life. Mm -hmm. I was aggravated, bro. And at day's end, that's kind of the story. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, that's where it, end, it ends off. And then I went home. So, um, that's it. You know, I'm not going to get into the tactical things. In the, on, on fight night, I'm going to get into the, the actual tactical breakdown. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's ethical to do that right now. But on fight night, on the pay-per-view broadcast, I have some good tactical stuff that I will break down on fight night. Because at that point, you know, it's all, it all it's fight night anyway. Nobody really, I, I can kind of be more open about it and not feel so guilty about, you know, breaking out of tactics. Because then, you know, as much as, as, much as he doesn't deserve it, that, that piece of me is still a true fighter mm. in that I would never break down specific tactics to where your know, training can be specific. I know he would do that to me. He would. He's that level of piece of shit. He has no ethics. Yeah. But I wouldn't do that to him. But I find out I'm going to explain on the broadcast exactly what he does, how he does it wrong, and why he's going to lose. And how he's going to lose. I don't even know how he's going to lose. <laughs> that's, how, that's how confident I am. Uh, he's got all yes men, they correct nothing. They're a bunch of cheerleaders. The guy who loses every round, and he thinks like he's winning the round. Bro, oh, after round seven, I'll never forget after round seven of Sparring Tuesday, a round where he, which he had gotten beat the shit out of, by the way, mm -hmm. he looks at me and he says, that's right, 7-0 on me. And I said, I said, bro, I know you didn't skip your math classes back at home. I know you didn't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck you out of here. You know, I went back to my corner. Like, and that was the round where he caught a mean one. Like, six or ten, he caught a few mean ones. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, so, like, he's got a level of denial where he, did, he thinks he's doing good. Mm. He doesn't want to hear any, anybody correcting him. He's a, he's a loose motherfucker to where nobody can even tell him how to do something different because otherwise he'll get ir irritated or, or, or offended. Mm. So his team is just a bunch of yes men and cheerleaders, you know, they just want to be there for the ride. Everything he does is good to them, even though it's not. And you know what, like I said, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm not going to tell you how he does it, I'm not going to tell you anything. I'll tell the broadcast. But on the broadcast, I'm going to tell you the breakdown, I'm going to tell you what he does, I'm going to tell you even a couple of things he may do okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you exactly how he's going to lose the fight. Because I know already. I know exactly how he's going to get beat. Because, because it, it, there's glaring, there's things that are just glaring at you. There are things that are just glaring at you. Mm -hmm. And he's doing nothing to correct them. He's only getting more, he's only digging the grave worse and worse. He's fighting the best fighter of this era and possibly the best fighter that ever did it. Mm -hmm. And he's going to find out the hard Wow. That's, wow. That's... <laughs> That's a fucking crazy story, bro. Like, did, did did any of them even try and reach out to you after and and say, hey, it's not what you think, or like, I mean, did did, did Connor or anyone? Well, I, I I I spoke to uh, his manager after the sparring on Tuesday, and I, I just expressed a little bit of uh, um, I expressed a little bit of uh, unhappiness about you know the way I, I was being treated, and he was like, nah, you got it wrong. It's just it's all respect over here. Just Connor's a competitor. I'm like, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? It was it was just you know. It, 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 me and his manager had a good 
talk. We hashed it out. He's a good guy. His name's Adi. You know, he's a cool guy. And, you know, mm-hmm. we, had, we had a good talk afterwards. And it was cool. And we, we, it was one under the bridge at the end. So that was Tuesday. But then again, like I said, Thursday came and he, and he, and he put out everything out. Uh, Connor put out all the pictures. So it doesn't matter. And people saying that, oh, it's not Connor putting them out. It's his team members. Connor, everything runs through Connor. Right. No decision. He's such an egomaniac. No decision in that gym, in that camp, gets made without Connor's permission. Nothing. You can't breathe without Connor's permission that you can breathe. That's how aloof this guy is. So you're not going to tell me that wasn't from him, that picture, okay? You're not going to tell me. Everything runs through Conor McGregor in that camp. I've seen the camp. I know how things are run. It is all tapered around Conor, what he does, and what he says. Wow. Wow. You know, Paul, when, when, when they first... Uh, were, were, or, or when I first heard that, you know, they were talking about bringing you into camp, I, I thought it was because, you know, they wanted to pick your brain, they wanted to actually learn some things and this, that. But it, it sounds like this whole thing was a big setup. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think the intention was always bad from the start. I, I actually also thought they wanted to pick my brain as well, because I thought, why would you want to call a retired fighter into camp, you know? Like, you know, how much how much good sparring can I possibly give you unless I get into this shape, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I was, when, it, when I first got the call in early June, that was what I was thinking, you know? Like, you know, it was, like, kind of weird, mid-June. I got, I got it actually the, the, right after the war in Cobalt fight, so it was mid-June, the first call I got. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking, like, I mean, you guys probably want me to help out tactically, you know, and then give them some advice and whatnot. Because I, I heard they had no boxing coaches in camp, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought I was going to come in for sparring, but I also thought, yeah, you're right. I also thought they wouldn't maybe stick my brain tactically. But in reality, that was never the intention. It was always there were some very dark intentions. Honestly, they had some very dark intentions for me, and it's very clear. And it became the agenda became very clear. And I think if you if you if you're getting into my story correctly, you'll know the agenda was very clear. Mm-hmm. Because also. Like I said, when they, even even when they were working pads, they didn't want us in the gym. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so where that's something tactical that maybe you wanted me to see or whatnot, if you, if you really care about my tactical advice. If you don't care, I'm not going to give it to you. So, obviously, they didn't care about it, so I don't speak. But like I said, it was to a point where I wasn't even allowed to be in the gym when they were working the mitts or the pads, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh... I don't care. I mean, if they, uh, you know, that's their decision. I mean, that's not going to offend me. I don't care about that. You know what I'm saying? What's going to offend me and, and irritate me is the aloofness and the arrogance of the way you're treating me and, and the way you're treating other people and how you look down on everybody based on this status thing. You know, it's a, it's a real jerk-off way to be, honestly. Like, like to live like a jerk. I remember when I was young, I was very, very arrogant in front of the cameras. I would do a lot of yelling, a lot of trash talking. I'm sure you remember, Ben, you know? Mm-hmm. But, but I remember, like, when I would be in my house, I'd be like, wow, man, I'm like, around my friends, I'm like, it's hard to put on that act all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's fatiguing. It's tiring. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's tiring. Like, I'd be away from cameras and just be, uh, just appreciate the fact that I could be around my friends and I don't have to act like that, you know? Yeah. Like, but this guy, this guy managed to be a jerk off all, all by himself 24 hours a day. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Like, you can, you, you put in, you put in a lot of work, bro. That, that is a, I'm telling you, man, it is a fatiguing way to be. Just to be a jerk off all day long, 24-7, even when you sleep, like, that is a really tiresome way to live, bro. It mm. is amazing. I, I was, I was blown away by it. I really was. I was blown away. Like, I was, like I said, at a certain point, I turned, there, were, there were times where I was waiting for him to just come up to me laughing and say, gotcha, just kidding. You got punked. I was only kidding. Like, I was waiting for it to be like one big joke. Like, there's no way that a jerk off of this level exists in real life. There's no way. I mean, I, I, like, I've met a lot of jerk offs in my life. I really have. But man, but never, this, this guy took the cake. Like, I, I, I can't, I can't explain it to you. He took the cake. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. Yo, but that, that's what I mean, though. It sounded like it was one big... I mean, it, it, it seems like he wanted to get you there so he can try and put hands on you and this, that, and the other. But he, once he, was, he wasn't he was able to really do that kind of damage to you, it seemed like he tried to damage... Not only, not only that, here's the, thing, uh, here's the thing, Ben. I think uh, he found me out the first sparring, and the first sparring he did okay. So I, I felt like, okay, now I'm going to bring him in and set him up to get embarrassed, and then I'll send him home. I mm-hmm. think that was the intention. Right. But when, when he got... When he got his ass beat on Tuesday, it was a hard pill for him to swallow. Because that wasn't the one where he might have been over too. You know, I mean, he mm-hmm. had Dana there, he had Fatita there, he had, you know, that was, that was a hard, that was a better pill to swallow. Because not only did he get his ass kicked, he got his ass kicked while I was talking shit to him and to the people outside the ring that he had invited. Mm-hmm. You know, so, well, I think, like, maybe for a day he swallowed it, 
and then he probably just couldn't swallow it anymore. It was probably eating at him so much that he had to put those pictures out, you know? Because let me tell you, an aloof and arrogant prick like this, he must have not slept that night after the way he got his ass kicked Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Like, he must have ate at him and ate at him and ate at him that by Thursday he had no choice. He had to just put the pictures out. He couldn't hold it in, in, in anymore, you know? Yeah. And, uh, who do he is, you know? Who do he is? It'll be interesting to see uh, if anybody asks Dana White about, you know, the picture and, and, and see what Dana White says about, because uh, he was there. You know, he was there, yeah. so he should yeah. be... I spoke, to some, I spoke to some people, and, and they told me, I spoke to people, and they told me Dana would never give you the video. I, I was trying to figure out a way to get the video. Yeah. And, and, Dana would also, and, Dana, and Dana would also... uh never not back his guy. I mean, this is, this is his horse in a very big race. Wow. So he would always, he would always, uh, you know, take his side. And so you don't expect any, any anything you want to hear out of Dana. So, yeah. you know, there's a reason why he only lets his people in the gym, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a reason why he only lets his photographers in the gym and, uh, you know, all that other stuff. And there's a reason why everybody else's phones have to be put away when, when he's sparring, when he's working out. He learned from the, he learned from the Van Heeren experience. Mm -hmm. Van Heeren smacked him around and he thought he, he thought he was the only one recording. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then he came out the Van Heerden had his own video, copy of the video uh, of, uh, of sparring, and it, it showed how limited he is. Mm -hmm. And like I said, he's still limited. Maybe he's made a little bit of improvements in Van Heerden, but he's, he's still very limited. You know what I'm saying? There's not a guy that, that, that can box in, in his life. I'm sorry. Um, and, you know, he learned his lesson again. Just to, if, if he wasn't such a little cunt, you know, this would have all been all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would have had a mega promotion, and, and it would have been all good, and, you know, it, it would have been a fun fun event, and, you know, he would have got his ass kicked by Floyd, but, you know, at the end of the day, it would have been cool. He would have made new friendships. He would have made, you know, you know life is about networking, you know, and uh, it would have been cool. You know, I went into it with open arms. I really did. I went into it with really relishing an opportunity to meet new people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did. I met some new people in MMA that I'm, and I'm very, I'm, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm cool with, and, I, and I'm glad to have been a part of this whole fiasco because I've met new people, new friends, and I got like Brendan Shaw is, is a cool friend of mine. You know, I've mm -hmm. met Ariel Helwani, who's really cool. You know what I'm saying? I will have met these guys if it wasn't for this particular event. So I'm still not, I'm still not uh, 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 bitter about all of this. You know what I'm saying? I'm just bitter about the way it ended up turning out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Or not so much bitter, bitter is a strong word, but, but I'm also disappointed. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know. It, if, if you're a Conor McGregor groupie and your guy, this guy can't do wrong in, in, in your eyes, I mean, you know, it's probably a little bit of insecurity in your mind. If you have to look up to a, another human being to the, to the extent where you can't see any faults at all. I mean, to where mm -hmm. even when they're wrong, they're right. Like, you know, only God, I should, oh, you shouldn't view God in that particular light. You shouldn't, you shouldn't view any human being in that particular light. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, in reality. Mm -hmm. So, the fact that other human beings can follow along a guy like this and, and then when it's clearly wrong, still make him right. I mean, shows you the insecurity of all society in today's world. You know what I'm saying? But, mm -hmm. hey, God bless. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I said it like this to some of my friends. I said, I said, Connor goes back to his life. I go back to my life. I don't ever have to see him again. Maybe fight a week, you know, on fight night or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He'll mm -hmm. fight, you know. It's his event. It's not my event. I don't need to take any more headlines. You know, he, he created these headlines. He put out the pictures. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 didn't, I didn't create these headlines. You know, everybody makes like, oh, you're creating these headlines. I did nothing, bro. He put the pictures out and the media stormed me because of the pictures. Mm -hmm. I would not have had the media storm if he wouldn't put those pictures out. Okay, mm -hmm. the media is looking to storm me to put a bad spin on my name now. You know, you know how the media gets. The media will put a bad spin on anything if you let them get a chance to. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of defend myself, but I wanted to defend myself in a way where I didn't have to shit on him. But he forced me to. He forced me to just come clean. And like I said, the tactical stuff will remain in my back pocket. That's for the broadcast. Mm -hmm. That's for the Showtime broadcast. And that's going to make the Showtime broadcast fun. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to explain to you exactly how he does things, what he's doing wrong, a couple of things that he does pretty decent. And now he's going to lose the fight. Mm. Because, trust me, there's no correction he's making. It's all yes, man. It's all cheerleaders in his, in his, uh, in his camp. They, they, they all just should bring their pom-poms every day to the gym. They don't need to bring anything else to the gym. They don't need to do shit. Because he's, anything he says goes. Everything he does is yes, you will great champ. Okay? They, all they need to do is bring their pom-poms. They don't do shit in that camp. They don't want to correct the fucking thing. Wow. Wow. Yo, did you, did you, I know like right when uh, your tweets went up, Chris Van Heeren was on Twitter too. He actually co-signed everything you said. Um, about about Connor and everything. Had, did he did he reach out to you? Had, like, did he send you a DM? Did he say yeah, anything yeah, we, to you? Yeah, we, we spoke up briefly, Cole, man. You know, he basically said, you know, he went through the same thing, you know, but it, luckily he had one of his own people that had recorded the, the sparring as well, so he was able to to uh, get the, set the records clean about that sparring, you know? Yeah. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta understand the level of, 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 of 
of the general we're dealing with here. Like, mm. when you're gonna put out a picture of, of a push down and, and try to play it as a knockdown to the public mm. at the expense of somebody helping you, like, you gotta realize the level of the general we're dealing with here. This person will stop at nothing to try to get, get fame and money. Like, this is, this is a, this is a prime level degenerate person that, like, that nobody should want to be able to surround themselves with. So, like, 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 people like this, like, I don't see how anybody would want to be around them. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they'll do anything to cut, they'll cut anybody's throat to get ahead in life. You know what I'm saying? It's like, even people that are willing to help them, they're always there to help. You know, like, so at the end of the day, yeah, Chris talked to me and, and of course he co-signed everything because he had been through it before. It just, you know, he had been through it in a situation where he at least had the video. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have the video and I'm not going to be able to get it probably, you know? So it is what it is. And, um, you know, I, like I said before, I'll go back to my life and he'll go back to his life and, uh, and he can have his life and I'll have my life. And I, I had no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? I had no problem with that before. If I would have never went to camp, honestly, I would have had no problem with that either. You know, mm -hmm. this, this wasn't, this wasn't the intention. It wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be this way. And if I knew it was going to be this way, I, I wouldn't have went to camp. It wasn't that important to me. Mm -hmm. I just thought it would have been a fun experience, a cool experience, you know, uh, People say, oh, but you talk shit about him uh, months back going to the fight. Yeah, I was trying to get the fight to reality. You know, I was trying to get the fight. And I think all, all other fighters understand that. Because I've had words with fighters like in the past, like Robert Guerrero, Devin Alexander, where it looked like we were going to fight. So we started hashing, we started beefing in the media mm -hmm. uh, about the treatment. I remember we did the Mission Hopkins years ago when I won my first world title. You know, like, we started beefing in the media because, you know, you feel like maybe you might fight or you might get this fight. So you start beefing in the media. And then when you don't fight, you see each other and you just give each other a pound and you say, what's up, bro? Everything good? How's the family? Mm -hmm. You know, you're friends. Yeah. At the end of the day, this is a brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, so for anybody to think like, okay, Paulie talked bad about him six months ago when he was trying to get the fight, like, you don't hold that grudge. No fighter holds that grudge. Mm -hmm. No fighter does that. It's happened even to me. Well, the fighters have done it to me as well. You know what I'm saying? So and nobody ever holds that grudge and I don't hold that grudge either. Yeah, I understand it. You know, so... so Unless you actually fight, there's no grudge to be to hold. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing mm -hmm. there. So that's what I'm saying. The level of of of, of person of, of low life this person is, 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 and they shocked me. Like I said, I was just waiting for Ashton Kutcher to come out of somewhere and be like, Ah, Paul, you got punked. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it didn't seem real. To me. The whole thing didn't seem real to me. Like I said, there's no way a human being that's as much of a jerk off can be alive. I mean, there's no way. It, 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 it has to be a joke, wow. but it's not. <laughs> Yo, you're gonna. It, it, it's probably gonna be because you you have to do like the the fighter meetings and stuff before the fight actually takes place, right? Yeah, you do, but you know, half the time guys like that don't show up. I mean, I know Floyd half the time doesn't show up. You know, Conor may may or may, may not show up. And yeah. honestly, they may remove me from those meetings anyway. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, mm -hmm. if Showtime they remove me from those meetings just for the fact, just for, for the sake of this. You know what I'm saying? Because in reality, I've been in Conor's camp, so you don't you, you don't want to risk if I would would tell Floyd anything, which I wouldn't. But of course, you know, just for, for ethics, you probably wouldn't want to keep putting me in a meeting with Floyd. And of course, for Conor, you know, there was the beef, so I wouldn't you wouldn't want to put me in the in, in the meeting. With Connor's team because you know you're trying to hype a fight you're not trying to create attention somewhere else when right. the attention should be on the fight between Connor and Floyd so so I, if I know my bosses the way I know them you know I wouldn't be surprised if they removed me from the meetings yeah. and it's fine whatever I mean like I said I look forward to fight night and just having a good broadcast like I said I always look forward to breaking the action down tactically I love getting into the X's and O's of things and you know I have you know it'll be some, I had some good X's and O's but I think because I've been in camp it's going to be some much more dedicated X's and O's that I'll be able to share with everybody but that won't be until fight night because like I said it wouldn't be right if I, sh if I shared that uh, uh, this early you know what I'm saying I wouldn't want to put that out there yeah yeah